what's going on everybody welcome back into the channel as you guys see on the screen here we're going to be going over the three and oh cassian aggression deck that i use at myrtle beach games locals this past week i want to go ahead and give a shout out to swag dean for the recommendation and another person as well but have you run cassian or ig yet there we go i'm going to show you guys the deck list that i ran and ended up going up against some pretty good opponents and then mikey here i think Vig vigilance cassian is an underrated deck this is not going to be vigilance i'll be probably working on that a little bit more. I ended up making that deck on stream and it was a kind of fun, but I think there's a better way to build it and I'll end up using it in the future. But I just want to give these guys both a shout out for requesting a Cassian deck of any kind. And as you see here, we're going to be running double aggression Cassian. I think it was really good. I went up against a Palpatine yellow deck, a Boba Fett green deck in round two, and a Krennic green deck in the finals, right? So the thing is, is that I went 2-0 against Palpatine Yellow. Palpatine Yellow was actually just better against Boba Fett Green rather than an aggression deck. Then I went 2-1 against Boba Fett Green, and I went 2-1 against Krennic Green. I'll be showing you guys the championship matchup between the deck I use, which is Cassian, against the Krennic Green. Still, beating Boba Fett Green and the Krennic Green, I feel like, gives some merit to the deck. It's not obviously better than those decks, but... I proved that you can beat those decks. It's the deck is capable of beating them. Obviously, as an aggression deck, it just you know play fast. But there are some things in the deck that kind of makes it a little bit different. But I'll go over that in a little bit. Again, it's just Cassian double red. So let's go ahead and hop right into the leader. And we're gonna be playing Cassian, obviously. And his ability as a leader, when you deal three or more damage to an enemy base, you can spend one. And exhaust him and you get to draw a card now that's actually really good i tend to do that to kind of finish off plays if someone grabs initiative before i do and i have the extra resource and i've done damage to the base i might as well go ahead and draw cards this allows you to draw into potentially better plays for next turn or even if you do it early and you just want to draw a card for a better turn a better card for the current turn it definitely helps the card draw is really really good now with that being said when he's out as a leader unit He's actually really solid. He has Saboteur, so he can get around Sentinels, which makes him really good at keeping up the aggression. But also, when you deal damage to an enemy base, he may draw a card. You use this ability once per round. That's fine. It's, it's just really solid. So, Cassian is a good way to allow you to keep up your card draw, keep your hand pretty big, and then you get to extend your plays and potentially draw into things that can make you deal out more damage faster. And I'll kind of go over the cards that you kind of want to draw into uh, when we get there. But again, I actually really enjoyed the deck. Surprisingly enough, I'm not huge on Cassian, but the the deck is good, like the character Cassian, but I'm going to get some heat for that. But still, I actually really liked how the deck ran. So let's go ahead and hop over to the base here. We played Tarkin Town. Now, this is where I struggled, and I still think you can go with the 30 HP base and be fine. The Tarkin Town, the reasoning I went with Tarkin Town, because being able to finish off a threat is pretty good, but also not only that, if you need to take out your own K2SO in a turn, you can go ahead and do that and deal expert damage to someone's base. It can be the difference in a match, and I think people don't think about that when it comes to Tarkin Town, taking out your own unit to potentially finish off some amount of HP or put your opponent into a point where that HP damage could potentially be what sets them into the final knockout hit the next turn, right? So Tarkin Town, I just felt like were there were just good options, right? You can take out something on your opponent's side that's a threat to you, or you can even take out your own unit to potentially deal some extra damage, or even make them discard a card. If they have one card in hand, go ahead and blow up K2SO and make them discard it. Then they are playing on freaking uh, top decking. And that could be a problem for people. So just keep that in mind. We're now going to go ahead and hop into the ground units and the space units. We play a lot of units in this deck. It's just how it kind of works. But still, the deck is about going fast. And I know mid-range Cassian might be what people prefer to play. And I definitely understand that. Cassian green and stuff like that. It's definitely understandable. The low tier like not low tier but the the budget deck list i'm going to show at the end of the video or the end of the deck list section is going to be a cassian green deck this is going to be more budget because i play legendary cards in this and i'm still going to keep on doing a budget deck list for the leader even if it's not the same colors we're just going to go ahead and do that right 
But with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the ground units. We have 25 ground units, a lot of ground units, but again, it's just how the deck runs. I run three spec force soldiers. It's a one cost and it's able to get rid of Sentinel for a turn. Could help you late in the match or you can know you can play at turn one and potentially play the next card as well. Getting this up plus a, the other card I'm going to be going over next on turn one is actually a really, really good turn one play because it allows you to, you know, get multiple units on the board and you won't have to fear getting one of them removed and not get damage on the board. So then the next card we have, we have Benthic Two Tubes. He's just really good on attack. Give another friendly aggression unit raid two. So he powers up your other units, keeping up that aggression, keeping up that damage on the opponent's base. It's really key in this deck. Next, we have Sabine Ren, Explosive Artist. You're never going to get the first ability off in this deck. I don't play enough aspects to do that. But still, being able to deal an extra damage to a defender or a base, just really, really good. Also, another heroic unit. It's going to be important for this deck. And that being said, this deck is going to be a little bit different than the deck that I did use in the tournament. Uh, this is more my sideboarded in stuff, kind of. And I'll kind of explain that when we get into the match. But we have Fleet Lieutenant. This is probably one of the most important cards in the deck. You need to have Fleet Lieutenant kind of early to be able to play on turn two to deal five damage or something or play like a combo, put out something big, do this, attack for more damage. This is just a really good way to get a unit on the board as well as going ahead and dealing damage in the same action. I typically try to get this in my opening hand if I can. It's just a really good turn to play, but still you need this card. It's just very, very good. Next, we have Fighters for Freedom. Fighters for Freedom is also really good in the deck because every time you play a red card, as you see, we're playing a ton of red cards. Everything but I think three cards in the deck are red. So every time you play a red card, you deal one damage to the base, again, keeping up that aggression. And then it has Saboteur. So it's just, again, a good way to get around Sentinels to keep on the pressure on your opponent's base. That being said, I played two of these on the same board at one point. I was doing two damage for every red card I played. It's just so good. But Fighters for Freedom, needed in the deck. K2SO, one of my favorite cards in the deck. It's so good. Overwhelm to deal damage to your opponent's base even when you attack into a unit and you kill it. So that's pretty good. And then when defeated, you get to deal three damage to opponent's base or make them discard a card. It's just a really, really, really good card because it has so much value. And at 4-4, four, at four, four, it's actually pretty good. And it goes really well with another card I'll go over later. K2SO, very, very good. Next, we play Saul Guerrera. Now, Saul Guerrera is really solid. He's a 4 cost because we are playing double aggression. He's a 5-4, so he does have more attack than K2SO. But also, the big kicker is, as an additional cost, your opponent has to give up 2 HP to play any, of ace, uh, any events. That's actually really good, especially against control decks that are trying to play a lot of like their events and stuff like that it's it's just a really good card to have on the board it makes boba fett have to pay two hp to use overwhelm barrage and stuff like that it's it's really good shoot first they're just taking a bunch of damage as long as saw guerrero stays on the board it also becomes a target for your opponent so they might have to give up a unit to take this thing out it's just it's pretty solid next we play two zebs zebs is good at kind of hitting something and then taking out another ground unit because when it defeats a unit you may deal four damage to another ground unit so it's just a good way to kind of control the board if you have to do so in the mid game it's just pretty solid and then the gorilla attack pod it's a good way to finish off the game because if there is 15 damage on either base it comes out ready so that's pretty good also it gets grit so as every time it gets hit it does more damage so that's what you're looking at when it comes to the ground units now let's go ahead and hop over to the space units we're only playing 12 space units but they're they're pretty pretty important we have green squadron a wing again comes out has raid two it's really really strong you get this out plus fleet lieutenant turn two that's like the ideal start for me it, it's just really really strong then you have the alliance x wing now this can be subbed in with a bunch of different things if you want to run partisan insurgent if you want to run other small units or even if you want to run upgrades like infiltrator skill and stuff like that there are replacements for alliance x-wing but i typically think that in this game a lot of people seem to neglect space and if that is the case alliance x-wing is actually pretty solid because you can go ahead and you can play that it still pops off with fleet lieutenant it still pops off with the next one we're going to go over to it's 
not too bad. It's just a simple two drop. It's vanilla two, three. But again, you can get damage off on your opponent's base if you need to do so. But again, this is a card that you can use to sideboard as I'll go over the sideboard in a little, little bit. It's just, it is the first target for sideboard. It depends on what opponent you're going to be going up against, right? Next, we have Wing Leader. Give a Rebel unit plus two, plus two. Two experience tokens. Just really good. I like to do this kind of mid-game to make something a lot more strong. And then you can go ahead and drop a Fleet Lieutenant and then deal out an extra four damage that turn. It's just a really good card to power up your Rebel units. And a lot of this deck are Rebels. Actually, I believe that everything in this deck is a Rebel. So... <laughs> It's just a good way to power up your upper units. Next, we have Red 3, the Unstoppable. Really good again. It is just really important in this deck. I have this the reason why everything in the deck for the most part is heroic. It gives raid one to all your heroic units. Really strong. It does become a target when it's on the board, but still it then distracts them from your other things to be able to attack with. Whenever I have this thing out on the board, I do attack with it to start off my turn because I'm afraid that people are going to target it down and take it out. But still, red three, really, really strong. It just powers up everything in the deck, except for two tubes and Saul Guerrero, but still. Nevertheless, very good card. Let's go ahead and hop over to the events now. We have Heroic Sacrifice, very good, especially with K2SO. Now you get to draw a card. Then you get to attack with a unit. For this attack, it gains when this unit does combat damage, defeat it. So if you mix this up with K2SO, you can go ahead and potentially do overwhelming damage over a unit, take it out, gets extra damage onto the base, and then it blows up and you get to deal another three damage to the base. It's probably why he's the art on the card. Also, it's a one cost. It's just really, really strong. You can argue it should be a three of, but still, I play it as a two of. Precision Fire. Now you can go back and forth between heroic sacrifice and precision fire but the reason i have precision fire at a three of is because you get to keep your unit but you if it's a trooper you get to do uh plus two damage plus two to your attack and then you get to deal extra damage to the base and it gets over sentinel so that's why i have it at a three of you have a lot of targets with that you have spec force soldier two tubes you have fleet lieutenant you have fighters for freedom so majority of the deck is able to use precision fire and get excess damage so that's why i have it a three of keep fighting i have a two of you get to ready up a three a unit with three or less power the reason i have a two of is because i have the another card on the list here that does the same thing but for uh two more resources but i guess to do extra but still having this as a two of it's just really good to potentially finish off the game when your opponent's not expecting it right next we have four calls i believe in very important for this deck you get to set up your future plays, but also reveal the top four cards. And for every heroic unit, you deal one damage to your opponent's base. That's why we have so many heroic units in this base, uh, in this deck. It's just needed for this. And listen, I played against the Palatine Yellow deck and whiffed on all four cards. It happens. It sucks. It just is what it is. But we keep on rolling. Next, our final card in the deck, we play Aggression. It's really good. You can use it to draw a card, defeat up to two upgrades, ready a unit with three or less power or deal four damage to a unit, you get to choose two of them. So typically I'm dealing four damage to a unit and readying a unit with three or less power. That's typically what I'm going for, but defeating up to two upgrades could be really key in a matchup you're playing against control and they're entrenching your units, it could be really good. Or if something has a lightsaber on it and something like that and your opponent's playing upgrades, pop those things off and we're good to go, right? So a very simple list, but still, it's a lot of fun to play and we're going to go ahead and hop into our sideboard and I'll kind of explain the reason my sideboard is the way that it is because this is an aggression deck. It does pretty well against obviously other aggression decks and it does good against control, but against Boba Fett, this deck might suffer. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to our sideboard here and show off what we have. We have two wolf. I have wolf in here if I'm going up against control and I need to go ahead and sideboard him in. It has saboteur and then when it when played and on attack, no one can heal. So it's just a good way to stop control decks from healing. That's why we have him in there. We have three Mace Windu Party Crashers. Now, this is more so against the Boba Fett matchup. If I have to go ahead and throw Mace Windu in there, I'll take out, you know, the Alliance X-Wings and stuff like that and throw on Mace Windu. And then we're able to kind of compete in the mid-range game to potentially take out his units and re-ready up our Mace Windu and kind of go that 
way with it and you know use mace as a way to kind of clear up the the board there right we have you're my only hope when i put mace windu in this also ends up going in more often than not you're going to take out things like probably keep fighting because you have aggression so you don't really need keep fighting in the deck so i'll throw in you're my only hope when i throw in mace windu so i'm taking out my alliance x-wings and i'm taking out my keep fightings and we're putting these in so we get to kind of you know keep up with the mid-range game and then with this you can go ahead and play zeb for free off the top of your deck you can go ahead and play saul guerrera and all this stuff and it's just cheaper and the mace windu can go ahead and be played for the cost of two so making him a five cost it's just really good value with this card and it can save you in a game then our final card we have smoke and cinders this is for that control matchup so if it gets to a point where he has a pretty big hand and i understand that i'm drawing a lot of cards as cassian but still i'm willing to sacrifice my cards in hand to make sure that my opponent does not have as many control cards as possible to really wreck me so that's why i have that right so you have the wolf and the smoke and cinders at two of for the control matchup and then you have the mace windu and you're my only hope at three ofs those could probably change right you can do mace windu at two and wolf at three probably makes a lot more sense and then keeping your my only hope at three is is fine right and smoke and cinders at two so that's the deck list that's kind of what we're rocking with again you want to go fast with this deck i understand cassian's really good as a mid-range deck and kind of going that route but i do think this is a viable way to play him and i will be showing off a blue cassian deck soon enough I have been really enjoying Cassian, so maybe I'll go ahead and show it off next week. But still, this is what we're rocking for our Cassian deck. And let's go ahead and show off our budget deck. Now getting into the deck that replaces the legendary cards. It actually, I decided to make it a budget deck. We're actually not going to include any rare cards either. It's the same thing. The, the base is just a 30 HP base. And then you're going to be running around using your rebel units to try to flood the board and take out your opponent's hp as fast as possible um we do also have things like steadfast battalion zeb and Grella attack pod to hopefully help out with the controlling aspect and then also dealing damage later in the game uh steadfast battalion helps you make your guys stronger as long as you have cassian on the board zeb does damage as we went over to before takes out a unit does dead ground damage Grella attack pod can potentially come out readied really really good there and then the space units Obviously, it's a little bit different in the fact that we have Bright Hope. Bright Hope is one of the main things in this deck that I think it, what makes it kind of work because you can go ahead and play this and bring Fleet Lieutenant back into your hand to then be able to go ahead and use it again to deal out extra damage. It can also be used with Admiral Akbar to potentially take something off the board. There's not really too much removal in this deck other than using your units to take out other units. So it might be needed to bring back Admiral Akbar and pop something if you really need to. Then we have things like Rebel Assault. A lot of the things in this deck are Rebels, so it does work in potentially dealing out extra damage because we have some Sentinels, some things to pop Sentinel, and then obviously the ability to attack multiple things is really good. We have a lot of Troopers in the deck as well, so this is really good, and then having Saboteur makes it really good. And then Keep Fighting is the same thing. We're just playing as a three of because, again, this is a budget list, and they're all commons and uncommons in this deck. And again, this is a... It's a very fast Rebel Trooper Cassian deck that Cassian is just giving you the ability to draw more cards to potentially draw into maybe Fleet Lieutenant, Wing Leader, and Precision Fire to make it so you can get in your attacks and deal more damage like that. So it's a very simple budget list. Again, I want to go ahead and show off cheaper decks if you don't want to use the initial deck list that I use in some of these videos. So I'm going to put both of those in the description down below. Now we're going to go ahead and hop over into the matchup between Krennic Green against my Cassian Aggression deck. And I hope you guys enjoy the matchup. See you guys over there. All right, now we're here in the matchup. You see I'm playing, obviously, my Cassian Red deck. Now, the thing is with this deck, it is pretty fast. It's actually kept up with a pretty good amount of decks. Obviously, in this tournament, I took down both at Green. The Palpatine Yellow, obviously, was an easier matchup for me because I'm playing aggro as more control. So there's that. And then we're going up against Krennic which in game one, I got smacked. I went off and I completely sideboarded my entire sideboard into my deck. And then I won game two. So this is the final game of the set of three for the championship matchup. And pretty much, I was actually really impressed with how this deck kind of ran with the speed and everything like that. It's not like crazy. And like, again, it's not better than these decks, but I do think that it does have a place to go up against these decks. 
And if you play well enough, you can take these decks down. So we're going to go ahead and start here. Obviously, Philip has the initiative because he lost game two. And so we're just going to rock with it. And you're going to see... Now, we have the Scott Pike Pursuer, and I go straight for my Queen Squadron A-Wing. This is going to be a pretty fast-paced match, but I don't want to be on the ground so he can't attack into my ground units when it comes to the Scott Pike Pursuer, because if he gets damage, he gets grit, and then on top of that, with Krennic, he gets an even more bigger power-up. So I'm going to focus on air, at least in the beginning, and so I'm not going to be taking that much. He'll be doing one to my base. I'm going to go ahead and now play the Fleet Lieutenant. I'm going to hit his base for five. One of the best combos in the deck, especially early on. Being able to hit the base for five early on is key. He now goes ahead and he ambushes. He starts to ramp. So this can become a problem because obviously if he starts to, you know, ramp and do a lot of things. Um, and yeah, so I forgot the damage on my Fleet Lieutenant. But I have initiative now. At this point, I should just go ahead and swing into his base with my Fleet Lieutenant. But... I'm going to go ahead and put down Smoke and Cinders again. I went to my sideboard and put Smoke and Cinders into my deck because, again, I am playing against Krennic Control. So in my mindset, it's like if it gets to the point where he has a lot of cards in hand, I do not want to deal with that. And so I should have just attacked right away. But with that being said, we have... I put down Saw Guerrera just in case he starts to use Power to the Dark Side or take downs like that. So he'll start taking some damage. So he has to kind of decide what he wants to do from there. He is going to go ahead and take out my Fleet Lieutenant. I gave up the damage there, which probably in hindsight wasn't the best plan there, but it's not the end of the world when it comes down to it because I now go ahead and I smack his base for three. So I'm still keeping up the damage. He's already at eight damage. I only have one on my base and I'm just trying to, again, keep up the speed. And if he wants to go ahead and play any of his events, he has to pay two. Uh, two health, I mean. So... It's just another way for me to continue to get damage on the board. See, he plays his Death Star Stormtrooper. Not Death Star Stormtrooper, but his, his Death Trooper. He puts two onto Saul Guerrera, because again, that, that's probably his main thing, is to try to get rid of that. I don't want to deal with the Grit taking the five damage from the Scout Pike Pursuer. So I go ahead and, you know, take that out with Tarkin Town. And then Saul Guerrera, again, it is a big threat to his deck. He's going to be able to heal, but his Krennic already takes five damage on it. And I grab the initiative and we just keep on, keep on keeping on here. So he's in a pretty decent spot because he has, you know, units on the board. He gets four damage and three damage on his units because of Krennic's ability. They're both damaged, so they're going to get those buffs. That's what makes this deck so difficult to deal with because not only is Krennic getting extra damage when he's, you know, hurt, but he's also restoring too. So I have to keep up the pressure and keep up the speed. I'm going straight in and hitting him for three. I cannot risk missing another three damage. And so we see the takedown. New is coming, so that's why I had to go ahead and get the damage. I'm now going to go ahead and play a K2SO. If he wants to go ahead and destroy K2SO, that's on him. He can then go ahead and take the three damage, which I do ask him how many cards he has in hand, but... I do end up doing the damage to his base. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card here. And he's now going to go ahead and be able to deal two damage to my base and heal up two on his base. So he has 10 damage and I have, well, he's actually dealing three damage. So it's going to end up being, I have four damage on my base. I have no units on the board. I have to try to figure out a way to start getting these units on the board and start getting some damage. So I put down keep fighting. Again, it's not, maybe it might not have been the best play. Like I'm, I'm, trying to think about what I want to do in terms of bringing out the units I go ahead and I bring out another K2SO because again if he wants to go ahead and take out my K2SO again he'll have to take another three damage so that's the main reason why I went ahead and did that now he's going to go ahead and he is just going to go ahead and vanquish which is what I kind of figured he would do and he'll take another three to his base he doesn't want the K2SO on board so he doesn't take a bunch of damage I now go ahead and I play a green squadron A-wing I see that he doesn't have enough resources to go ahead and smack me. But still, again, that should be another three damage. It doesn't make a difference in the game. But, oh no, actually, I'm going to go ahead and take out Krennic. I'll take the two, even though that should be three. Three damage. 
Now, in this instance, I have a pretty decent board state here. He does go straight into Vader, which is good for him. He's going to wait because he if he gets something with ambush, he'll use the ambush of the thing that he plays. But I don't believe he gets anything with ambush here. So he just goes ahead and plays the Viper Pro Droid to go ahead and see what he has, what I have in my hand. I have a pretty decent hand here, but he went ahead and he already used seven resources. So now I'm kind of free to go ahead and play my wing leader to power up my Queen Squadron A-Wing, right? So if I power up that, it becomes a 3-3, three, three, right, with raid 2. So that's really good. And then after that, in my head, I have to keep fighting. And because it has raid 2, I'll be able to do 5 twice. That's 10 damage onto the board, and that's really good pressure that I'm putting on my opponent. So. And then I go ahead and play keep fighting, because he did grab the initiative. And I'm going to swing for another 5. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Wolf. Now... Wolf is good. It'll stop him from being able to heal, although I don't think he has anything in his deck to really heal his base unless he plays Devotion on something, but still. Nevertheless, right now I have three units on the board. He can go ahead and take out... He does end up scooping here because he can go ahead and take out one of my... Like, he has power of the dark side here, right? So, what it comes down to it, he can power the dark side, but I just smack him with my Green Squadron A-Wing. It was a very fast match. Things kind of went back and forth. I had a misplay. I left three damage on the board with Fleet Lieutenant. And, you know. And then, obviously, we know that I took seven damage total. And, again, it didn't really matter that we made a mistake on the amount of HP that I've taken. It's because it didn't matter in the end, right? Even though I did take the seven, I still ended up winning that match. The Green Squadron A-Wing, at this point, would end up swinging in for game. And that's going to do it for there. But you see how just how fast the deck can really go. I have things in my deck that make people want to go ahead and target them, wasting their attacks on my base while I'm also still attacking their base and taking out their units in the process because they're willing to sacrifice their units to try to slow me down. But I just have so many small units that work so well together, it provides itself with so much speed. Now, when it came to the sideboard, I ended up putting Rallying Cry in the sideboard and stuff like that. And... Yes, Rallying Cry is really good, but I do feel like it's better against other aggro decks because you can go ahead and use it in other against other aggro decks, and then you can go ahead and put your attack above it. But when you go against like control decks, the raid two, not that it's bad, but I needed to go ahead and put in the Mace Windows, the Smoke and Cinders, and the You're My Only Hopes into the deck to try to make it so I can live longer in the long game. So again, the deck's a lot of fun. The link to the deck list will be down in the description below. Definitely check it out. I do think it's surprisingly fast. And again, with Cassian's ability to be able to draw cards, you can really draw into something to really make it so you can get what you need to get to make sure the deck continues to operate at a fast speed. Because there might be times where you don't have the cards in hand that you need to really go fast. But, you know, you use Cassian's ability, you go ahead, you draw a card, then you go ahead and bring him out, attack again, you get two cards for the turn. It's just surprisingly good in the amount of cards run that can really help you in the long run, right? So, again... If you guys are new here and you're enjoying the content make sure you hit that sub button support is always appreciated we have a twin suns deck list coming out this friday we're going to start doing twin suns matches on the channel at least once a month as well as a twin sun deck list we're going to try to bring those to you guys try to bring different formats to the channel to spice things up so i hope you guys are excited for that i'll see you guys on the next video bye